What's up, guys? Franco here with NextLevelBallPlayer.com, hanging out with Zach Cozart. Yeah. yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> that sounds about right. Okay, good interview over. All right, we're on. Um, no, Zach, appreciate you taking a few minutes with us. Um, want to talk uh, a few things. So let's start off. What is uh, one baseball-related lesson you learned early on that's kind of led to your success uh, over the years? Well, um, I'd probably have to say that it's uh, just attitude-wise and, and being prepared to come to the field um, and, and ready to work. Uh, that's what coming up all the way from when I was in Little League to right now, I mean, if you weren't 15 minutes early, you're late. So that's that's what I've been taught the whole time. And and w once you get that in your mind, it's almost like muscle memory and everything. You, you just you think you're late if you're not 15 minutes early. And then you show up and then you're ready to get your work done. And I think that that's helped me out along the way. Yeah. So you're drafted in the second round out of Ole Miss uh, by the Reds. How have you dealt with high expectations and uh, any pressure that comes along with being a, a top prospect and yeah I mean it's tough because you, you always have guys thinking oh this guy was a top pick uh, he has he, he's gonna be awesome you know he's gonna be the best player but it's not always that way I mean it's still a learning curve even for me when I got drafted I mean I went to Dayton and hit 230 and for the, the half year so obviously people were like wow why did we draft him in the second round he, we're doubting him this is 180 at bats and all I can say about that is it, it's, it's a long, first off, in a season, it's a long season. And then you, you have to improve every little bit every season. Sure. And that's what I think that I've done every year. I've, I've gone from uh, being able to just pull the ball to go the, hit the ball the other way. And, and, it, and it's not like a drastic change. It's something that just happens over time. You work on it in the cage. And once you get in the, in the game, everything happens for itself. Yeah, and after that short season, you're able to pretty much go single A, double A, triple A, and then make it to the big leagues last year. So obviously you made some adjustments. What what were some of those adjustments or things that really helped you kind of get over the hump? Well, for me in particular, um, offense was always the question for me. I mean, defense, I love defense. It's not a big deal for me. Um, and everybody knew, hey, this guy can play defense in the big leagues right now. So. But, I mean, obviously, I still worked on it. But when it came to hitting, I got with our our hitting guy, Ronnie Ortegon, with the Reds and just sat down. I had this big leg kick, and I was off balance all the time. And in the lower level, sometimes you can get away with it because they're going to throw more fastballs. They might throw hard, but they're going to throw a lot of fastballs. But once you get to double A and then tri obviously triple A, definitely in the big leagues, they know how to keep you off balance even more. Yep. So um, for me, it was just the, the timing, get, getting that front foot down. I know a lot of young guys, you hear that over and over again, the timing. But, I mean, I'm 26 years old, and I hear, I hear it every day still with your, with your hitting coaches, Dusty Baker. I mean, wh whoever it is, it's timing, timing, timing. And, that, and that's what I can say is uh, if, if you're on time, then you're, you're going to be in the right position to hit. Yeah. Is there a specific drill or some, some like mental cue that you use to get your foot, make sure you're getting your foot down? Well, uh, a key for me, which I, I just learned, I, I knew about it, and people have been telling me about it, but I just actually did it this past year, was when I'm on the on-deck circle. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't realize how important, and you watch guys in the big leagues, they'll, you watch them on the on-deck circle, they're getting their timing right then. Because you can't, you can't go into the box and then get your timing, because mm -hmm. it's too late, because uh, the guys are too good. So. I would say when you're on the on-deck circle, I mean, that, that's what I learned. Get your timing, and um, once you get in the box, it's just you don't think about anything. You, you already have studied the pitcher, and you're ready to go. Yeah, that was kind of the next question. Um, from the mental side of things, uh, I always try to ask the mental question because the game behind the game that you don't see. see. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it, has, it makes a big difference. Um, so can you kind of walk through your batting routine, maybe from – the dugout to the on deck circle to the batter's box and how you put yourself in in their position to to hit. Yeah, I learned at a uh, in college. At my, one, my one of my coaches was Dan McDonald. He's with at Louisville now, uh, the head coach there. Mm -hmm. But I learned to, I mean, even if you're in the hole, who, even if you're, if if you're in the double hole, like get your stuff right, like you're hitting. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like so, if you're not still three or four guys away, I mean, be ready to hit. So that's what even if I'm if I'm leading off. If I'm a leadoff hitter and the six holes up, I'm I'm mentally thinking, okay, what's going to happen this inning? What could happen? And 
um, when I get up there, what am I going to do to execute? And then the same thing goes to when I'm in the hole and on deck. You know the situation. Runner on right. first, nobody out, and I'm on deck. And Okay, if this guy gets on his first and second, nobody out, I'm probably going to bunt him over mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And it's just little things like that that uh, – because once you think about it, you're not surprised when you get in the box and you right. all of a sudden get the bunt sign. You're like, oh, oh I, I don't know about bunting. Mm -hmm. So you just you go through all the stuff. It, same defensively. I mean, you sit there and you're like, all right, ball hit to me. Before it's even hit to you, I'm going to go to, if it's hit to my right, I'm going to go to third if a guy's on second. Just little mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, that's great. And then as far as the mindset in the, in the box, um, do you do something to make sure that you clear your thoughts or what does that exactly look like for you? Uh, for me, I think the main thing is breathing. Mm -hmm. You see a lot, like guys are up there and they're all like stiff, and and, it, and that's the way I was even in college and coming into pro ball. But we had a sports psychologist come talk to us at, at, our, at our facility in Sarasota uh, when we were out in Florida. And mm -hmm. I mean, that's the first thing he talked about. I mean, breathe because if you can breathe, then you can clear your thoughts, and and then everything just feels better. So mm -hmm. uh, I think. That's the most important thing. I breathe, and then everything else takes care of itself. Do you have like a focal point or something you look at? Some guys, you know, they look at the at the uh, trademark or something and take a big breath, deep breath. Do you have something like that, or I really don't, to be honest with you, because when I I'm I'm so focused when I get into the box mm -hmm. that I don't think I need to do that. But I know there's guys that do. I mean, you watch Joey Votto hit. You see him always looking when he gets up there. He points his bat. And he looks to the left. The pitcher's out front. He's looking to the left. Mm -hmm. And I don't. I've never. I haven't talked to him about it. But that. I'm, I bet that's to get him focused. Right. So it, it's one of those things that if it, if it feels good for you to do it, obviously you can do it. But for me, I, on deck is the big the big key for me. Once I get my timing down, because that's the key. If I th if I know I have my timing, then I think the pitcher's in trouble. Absolutely. Um, is there something specific you do to get out of slumps? If you're if you're in a slump, you got a drill you go back to, or something that kind of brings you refocuses your approach. That's funny because this year when I, I was in Louisville, and I started the year six for fifty hitting. That's where I started the year. So, and Ronnie, our hitting guy, comes in and I'm struggling because obviously baseball is all mental. And Absolutely. once I start going, once it starts going downhill, that's the thing. You got to figure out how to make it a less of a slump. That's why Joey is so good because his 0 for 10s are his slumps, not 0 for 30s. So for me, he came in and talked to me, and I was thinking all this mechanical stuff, you know, like my, my, I'm not getting my foot down, my, where are my hands? Yeah. But it had nothing to do with that. It was all mental, and that's the key is you, you got to slow everything down. Like even he, he told me, even in the on-deck circle, you're, you're sitting there on deck and take your swings half speed. Just completely slow everything huh. down. And I, I kid you not, the night he talked to me about this, I went five for five with four doubles and a home run. I kid you not, that <laughs> night. And then from then on, I was hitting like, what, six for 50 is like hitting 120. Yeah. I went on, and a month later, I was hitting 320. And it just like it's just that yeah, mindset. It's just the mind. It's just the mindset. It's crazy how it works. But I mean, everybody that's played the game and knows about the game knows that mental. It's way more than your physical. And that's a great point. The guys they go to tweaking all sorts of things when you just gotta get out of your way. Yeah. A lot of times it's it's a mental it's a mental block that's keeping Definitely. you from from reaching your potential. Um, that's great. And how about uh, making the adjustment? Go. Let's go back to high school. Making the adjustment to. You know, D one big time mm -hmm. baseball at Ole Miss. Um, what was what was one of the harder adjustments for you to make um, making that jump? Um, for me, I think it's just getting. For me, I I, I was 160 pounds in in high school. This is why, I, for me, I tell guys that are high school kids if they add, if they had wanted my opinion on skipping college and going to pro ball, mm -hmm. I would say go to college because I weighed 160 pounds and I went to college and worked out. And I weighed 195 after that fall, so I gained wow. 35 pounds wow. of muscle because I had never worked, I never lifted a weight before in my life. Yeah. So if I would have went to pro ball, you don't lift weights like you do in college. Right. You do your you do your maintenance programs and stuff like that, but you won't gain weight. So um, that's not that's not a big adjustment like your your question was, but that was the most important thing for me yeah. was to gain that weight and for me to be able to. You know, feel comfortable being out there because when you get to college, the guys are they look so much bigger, everything looks right. bigger. So, just ready for that. Yeah. Um, all right. 
you consider yourself kind of defensive specialist in, in your own right. Um, what, what advice would you give to infield or shortstops out there looking to take their defense to the <laughs> next level? Well, I kind of talked about it earlier briefly when I said that you, you can't just go out there and, and when you catch the ball, then think of what you, what you want to do, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, you're only certain guys, I mean, when it comes to range and stuff, you see guys that aren't that fast, but they get the balls. You're like, how are they right. doing that? But they're anticipating the ball. You know your pitcher. Mm -hmm. The pitcher throws a lot of curveballs. You have Bronson Arroyo on the mound. He's throwing a lot of curveballs and flipping it. flipping it up there. If a big right-handed hitter's up, he's going to pull the ball, you know? So you, obviously in the big leagues, you have a lot of scouting reports. It's a lot easier. But that you got to know the pitcher. you got to know the hitter, which is obviously easier in the big leagues. But sure. um, if it's a pull guy, you, you slide over because um, – that's very important to know that when uh, if you're out of position, that can cost you more than if you know what I mean. Yeah. So, uh, and then obviously, like I said, the before the ball's hit to you, runner on first. Okay, this ball's hit. hit I'm going to turn the double play. Or if it's a slow roller, I'm not going to second. I'm going to go to first. Right. Uh, Drew Stubbs is running, so if the ball's hit slow at me, I just go to second, and that's it. We can't turn the double play. Stuff mm -hmm. like that. Uh, final question, uh, one piece of advice you give aspiring ball players out there just looking to take their game to the next level in general? Uh, just uh, stick with it. It's a, Obviously, it's a tough game, and, and like I said earlier, you've you got to mentally challenge yourself to, to stay mentally stable because this game, I mean, if you're 3 for 10 in hitting, if I'm talking as an offensive side, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you could be a borderline Hall of Fame. You're a Hall of Famer, so you're going to fail 70% of the time even if you're a Hall of Famer, so... And most of us aren't. And uh, that's the thing. You just got to keep sticking at it. And uh, that mental side is the most important side. That's awesome. Thanks yeah, for your time, no man. No problem. Really appreciate yeah. it. Good luck. It's time for